It's Friday, it's Poets Day, and that can mean only one thing. It's the vlog that nobody asked for. So I'm going to take this opportunity to go through last week's newsletter. All six pages of it. I don't know where people found the time to, to, to read all this. Uh, I apologise for the, for the length of it. I was rambling a little bit. I don't, however, apologise in any way for the content of it. Now, I know it did cause a little bit of controversy. Nobody reported it within the group. However, some people were unable to view it. Some people got up to a 90 day ban for simply commenting on it. So let's unpick this, shall we? First of all, I talked about the wellness weekend and I'm gonna do so again slightly. Um, the wellness weekend is happening in June at Poolbridge Farm over a weekend. You can either camp or you can, you can uh, go home on, on an evening. There are five different activities going on throughout the weekend. We've got yoga, breath work, sound bath, forest meditation and the nature walk, as well as loads of other things. We've got a talk on menopause. We've got a nutritionist coming in. We've got cacao ceremonies. We've got as much swimming as you want. There's swimming lessons going on. There's food, there's music, there's there's drinks. We've got a drinks company in to, to, to give you some free drinks on Friday. They're really nice, actually. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the wellness weekend. Um, we then talked about what we're up to at Poolbridge Farm. The next thing to do, as you all know, is we're trying to get the third lake up and running. Uh, that should be happening within the next day or so, hopefully over this weekend. We then talked about the cabins at the end of the M Lake that we're going to get up and uh, for, for, for the beginning of summer. So we're then going to move on and refurb the toilets. So page one, nothing controversial so far. I then talked about the benefits of the sauna. All good. Uh, I then talked about the swimming lessons that you can have from Corinne um, here at Peelwich Farm. I think that's a great thing to do if anyone wants to improve their swimmy swimming. Speak to Corinne and not not me, because I can't help you. We then talked about the cuckoo, little ducklings, the fish. We even commented on the stoats and the little kits that we had running around last year. All good so far. We talked about blue tits. We talked about lilies. I did suggest that I'd sacrifice three Smurfs to dye the lakes. Hopefully nobody took that seriously. No Smurfs were harmed during the making of Poolbridge Farm. Ladies changing area. Uh, most people have a dry robe and don't, don't care, but for those that want that little bit of added privacy, we're going to add a little area next to the changing rooms for ladies only. And then may have gone on to get a little bit political. Um, there was huge amounts of sarcasm all the way through. So I, I essentially, I, I talked about my sorrow that Dominic Raab had had to resign. I didn't go into details about his alleged bullying because I, I don't know the details. I did suggest that the man was a moron given his past record as the Brexit secretary and foreign secretary. I don't think anyone's gonna argue with me there. Uh, I then went on to talk about the Education Secretary, or the Minister for the Creation of Solar Exam Factories, Gillian Keegan, best known for not being Kevin's wife. I thought that was funny. Um, so yeah, I, I, I talked to her, I then obviously poked fun at the Prime Minister, um, best known for not being as useless as the last two. I think I called the last two cockwombles. Could almost be... Term of endearment, that couldn't it? Not for them too, because them do a fucking morons. But anyway, if that's your what you're best known for, isn't it? Why are you prime minister? Because I'm not as moronic as the last two. Teresa Coffey, minister for the destruction of rivers and all living things. So yeah, I I poked fun at her because when she was the secretary, uh, the health secretary. The most important thing she thought to do in the NHS was to talk about the Oxford comma. Where do we get these people from? I then went to talk on about the pollution in the rivers. 72 billion has been paid in dividends to shareholders since it was privatized and they still say that they don't have the money to improve infrastructure. The CEO of Seven Trent got paid 3.9 million pounds in salary and bonuses last year despite 80,000 gallons of raw sewage being dumped into watercourses. 
how is that I think how can that remuneration be so high when you are so useless if you are going the the dividends of the shareholders is more important than the ecology of this country then you should not be doing that job it is that simple yet yeah, these boards are paying these people ridiculous money and it it, it has to stop um i then talked about uh nicola shaw she's called new ceo of yorkshire water she has a second job as a non-exec director at the consolidated airlines group she gets paid 115 grand a year she finds time for a second job because she's doing such a good job at Yorkshire Water, stopping all that sewage, isn't she? Does she need the money? The last CEO of Yorkshire Water got paid 1.3 million. That was their package. She does not need the money. What she needs to do is concentrate on getting a getting a job done properly. The rivers are full of shit, and she finds time to do a second job. It's ridiculous. So I suggested we start a revolution. I don't know what revolution means. Um, We can't carry on just signing petitions because it gets us nowhere. Look at the French. I mean, that. I mean, I'm not suggesting we do that. Um, but something has to happen. Something has to happen because if we can't change, if you took a poll of, of, of everybody in this country and said, "Is this right? What what the companies are doing?" What, what the, the MPs and off what are allowing the CEOs to do of these, these companies in the interest of, of making the shareholders richer, is it right? Who's going to say no? Who's going to argue? Nobody. Yet it's happening. It doesn't matter how many petitions we write. Yorkshire Water is owned by this complex business web. They're based in Jersey. They're not in Jersey for the beaches, are they? They're there because they don't pay any tax. A third of it's owned by the Singapore government. Do they care about a petition that we write? No, they don't. So what I'm suggesting is on May the 4th, half past seven, let's come to the farm, have a brew and hatch a plan. What I think we need to do is, well, no, I'm, I'm not even going to suggest what I think we need to do. There's, 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 there's a number of vocal people and groups at the moment, SAS, Surface Against Sewage, incredible job so far they've got such a good app to show where the where the sewage is worse where these uh, where it's being dumped that shouldn't be a thing you shouldn't need an app to show you where shit's being dumped into rivers for god's sake fergal sharkey a phenomenal job uh what he's doing is highlighting the plight of the rivers um can't fault them but the government are not scared of them love the surfers and what they're doing but there isn't enough of them and some of them are probably just <laughs> quite a few of them are maybe a bit stoned um <laughs> sweeping generalization i know i joke so if we banded together and i say we the ladies uh and again i generalize there the swimmers should i say the people that should be able to use the rivers for what we want to do Everybody loves wild swimming, that, that's, I'm assuming, listening to this, be it in ponds, be it in rivers, be it wherever. We should be able to swim in rivers without the fear of swimming with shit in there and getting ill. It's ridiculous that we've got to this stage and so much money has been paid to shareholders. It's wrong, absolutely wrong, and something needs to change. Now, the government might not be scared of surfers or Fergal Sharkey, as good as he was in the undertones, the dirt seemed to be listening. Off what dirt seemed to be fining the companies. They can fine 10% of turnover, and yet they're not. Legally, they're allowed to do that, but they're not. So who are the government going to be scared of? I'd say a bunch of menopausal ladies marching with banners. I think they would. And what are they scared of? They're scared of losing the job. They're scared of losing the power. They're scared of losing all this dirty money that they're raking from big pharma from the the military industrial complex from all these lobbying corporations that come in mm, can you can you answer this can you answer ask this question just do your job for god's sake so come and join me let's hatch a plan and let's take this battle to them because it is a battle I then went on to talk about the book of the week. Um, 
which is Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake, which the lovely Ruth uh, donated to the book club at Poolbridge Farm. It's amazing. Thank you for that. Uh, I will be putting it back in the book club for somebody else to read when they're finished. And that was it. There's nothing controversial in there. If you don't agree with it, that's fine. But pff, I don't know what you disagree with. What, because I've poked fun at the Tories? I'm going to carry on doing that. Because I'm really angry. Really, really angry at the, the, the sewage that's been dumped into our rivers. And if that upsets you, then I have run out of fucks to give, quite frankly. Um, so there you go. Come and join me. Come and join me on May the 4th. So in the future, we can look our children in the eye. Because in 10 years' time, when my kids, the seven and nine, when they're grown up and they say, Daddy, what did you do when, when they were dumping, dumping poo? Well, 17 and 19, when they're dumping shit into the rivers, what did you do? And I answered them, I signed a petition. I know that's not good enough and they'll know that's not good enough. So, if we want to be able to look our kids in the eye again, let's have this battle. And I'll see you on May the 4th. Thanks for listening.